DFM, DFM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, new narcotics bureau to tackle hard drugs. Human resource practitioners discuss employment issues. And overloading remains a concern. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. The Fiji Police Force is working on establishing its first ever narcotics bureau. The bureau will need qualified and experienced personnel to execute required duties that will mainly focus on the fight against hard drugs such as methamphetamine. In the past few years, the force has carried out a huge number of raids across Fiji where hard drugs worth millions of dollars have been seized. Chosaya Nanunga reports. A stringent selection process will be followed to ensure the Narcotics Bureau achieves its purpose. The Bureau is more of a national uh, type uh, setup, but it's something that we are working hard on, something that needs to happen. Uh, and we are working on that now, including the identification of people, getting the concept uh, drawn up, uh, and I want to see that in fruition before the end of, uh, of this year. This initiative is a way forward for the police force to tackle the importation, selling and consumption of hard drugs such as methamphetamine. It's something that uh, has to be set up right because it has to, be, it has to uh, be capable of dealing with dirty cops that might be corrupted uh, in terms of the drug dealings, that, uh, the, the drug issues that go, go on. Defence Minister Inesi Riratu has assured the government will continue to invest and foster national security. It's national security, because we need national security for economic security, and at the same time, we also need, as we grow, we need to invest into our security as well, and therefore we need economic security for national security as well, and that is important for a developing country like Fiji. $800,000 has been set aside in the 2019-2020 national budget to establish the Narcotics Bureau. Around 50 offices are already undergoing a narcotics law enforcement training. And once the Bureau is operation, they will directly report to the Commissioner of Police. Chosa Inanunga, FBC News. Efforts are now being put in place to further enhance the employee relations, advocacy and investigative skills of human resource practitioners. The Fiji Human Resources Institute, in partnership with the Ministry of Justice, has organized a workshop for HR practitioners on various employment-related issues. Pranita Prakash well, through reports. effect is significant when the human resource practitioners have a better understanding of the law. If they uh, have a better understanding of the law, if they have a better understanding of day-to-day um, -day HR practices, it will help them with their job. And anything that helps uh, HR will help business and will help the economy. The Institute believes HR practitioners need to be aware of the legislations when carrying out their duties. Uh, the purpose of the workshop, the objective really is to, is to equip our members, members of the Fiji Human Resources Institute, with, uh, with the skills to be able to, to handle um, employment relation, relations matters. And uh, it's also giving them uh, an opportunity, it's giving them some insight into what the whole process is all about. More than 60 participants are part of this workshop which ends tomorrow. Similar workshops are expected to be held in other parts of the country. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The tragic demise of Dixon Sito, who played an integral role in a number of sectors in Fiji, has left many shocked. Prime Minister Varenga Bainimarama and together his wife Mary have sent deepest condolences to the Sito and Chan families. Penny Marama says Sito has left us with a legacy that will forever be etched in Fijian history and an impact that will span generations. As a pillar of Fiji's tourism sector, his effort and ethic helped transform Fijian tourism into the iconic industry it is today. As a leader in the Fijian Chinese community, he was a beacon of unity and inclusivity. As the chair of the Tertiary Scholarship and Loans Board, his faith in young people charted the way towards the introduction of TELS, empowering tens of thousands of students to realize their dream of higher education. The Prime Minister says for him, Sito was more than a partner in progress. He was a friend and will be missed dearly. 
Meanwhile, the Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association has also sent their sympathies and condolences to the Sito family. More than $2 billion will be needed to fix roads damaged by years of uncontrolled overloading. Infrastructure Minister Chone Usamate says the objective of the government is to better the transport network and have an internally recognized infrastructure. Pranita Prakash reports. Overloading is a major problem for the infrastructure industry as it drastically reduces the lifespan of road networks and bridges. Seal roads that have been decimated by decades, decades, of uncontrolled overloading and negligible maintenance will require an investment of over $2 billion. Uh, it will take quite a number of years to bring all of these back to an acceptable standard that you want. The Fiji Roads Authority says there is a need to adhere to the load limits. If everybody observes the load limits and you take the $200 million a year and reinvest it into the economy, the economy grows. The FRA is working with the Land Transport Authority to address this issue. Portable way bridges have also been acquired by the LTA to allow mobile inspections. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Up ahead, Thurston Music and Food Festival attracts huge crowd. And Savo Savo Fashion and Art Show hail the success details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The overcast weather did not deter people as they continued to gather at the Thurston Food and Music Festival in Suva. The event, which is organized by Knox Entertainment in partnership with FBC's Gold FM, is only in its third year and continues to get bigger. Lena Rees with the story. Children from Dave Stevens School of Music, who are first-timers to the event, were overwhelmed to be on stage performing for their families and the public. Uh, a lot of them, uh, they, they, they know, they know. Uh, their parents come in and they cry to see their, their kids up there making a difference. Uh, it's worth it all. Event organizer Inoke Kaloni singer, better known as Knox, says more similar events are needed to expose local talent. One, for the musicians. Uh, and two, for the people. You know, uh, a nation uh, needs to uh, be able to entertain its own people. You know, well, uh, and um, we, we're providing that, and of course, uh, there are the events of the country, but about the, and we, this is our part in it. You know, and um, for the musicians, it's very important for them because it's, um, it's another uh, a revenue platform, and, uh, and uh, some of them, you know, it's, uh, they, they're making new fans today. Organizers of the Thurston Food and Music Festival have been happy with the turnout so far that has exceeded crowds from previous years. So if you have nothing to do, the Thurston Food and Music Festival here at Thurston Garden continues till 10 p.m. Lena Reese, FBC News. $35 million has been allocated in the next year to complete the reconstruction of schools affected by tropical cyclones. This was highlighted by Minister for Education, Rosie Agbar, while commissioning the Wainimbuka District Primary and Wainimbuka Secondary School's new building yesterday. Agbar has also commended the assistance given by the Indian government in the rehabilitation process. The assistance was earmarked to reconstruct 20 schools, out of which 14 have been completed. And in the next financial year, the government has allocated another 35 million to complete all reconstruction of schools that has been affected by Winston, Kenny, Josie and Tisigita. An auction for a worthy cause. Several pieces from the collection of top fashion designers in the country were up for grabs last night as part of a fundraiser for the Lupus Foundation of Fiji. Eleanor Turangaiviu has more. Newlyweds Trevor and Ellie from San Diego, California capped off their honeymoon to Fiji with a worthy purchase. The couple bidded for this dog face art piece by local artist Wanga Windriketi at the Lupus Foundation of Fiji fundraising dinner at Ndaku Resort in Savu Savu last night. We were honored to get to contribute and uh, make a donation through a purchase of a painting that we're going to 
um, proudly hang in our home and we'll never forget it. The art piece was one of the few items that went up for auction last night to help raise funds and awareness for Lupes in Fiji. The pieces are from designers Isaiah Conrote, Hapfil Hoda, Lona Grace, Cherish Prasad and Epeli Twimbenga. So it was a beautiful display. There was tons of different things on, on showcase this evening. Uh, great local talent, beautiful local models and we had an amazing night. The auction marked the end of a successful three-day fashion and art show. Amongst the models for the show were young men and women from Savu Savu, as well as hotel employees and a group of yoga students from the U.S. We felt very honored. Um, we had to revise our schedule <laughs> and what we need to do in our training, but it was such a delight. Um, none of us have ever modeled before. It was really, truly an amazing experience. The three-day event attracted support from the wider Savu Savu community, hoteliers and tourists who rallied behind the organizers in a bid to help raise awareness for lupus. Feedback that I've had on every single day has been enormous. It has been uh, overwhelmingly successful. Talks are in the pipeline to make this fashion and art show an annual event. Eleanor Turanga View, FBC News. The restructure of the Agriculture Ministry will include the decentralization of decisions to regions for improved service. This is highlighted by Permanent Secretary David Kolitangani to the Ministry staff during a workshop in Nandi. Philippe Naikaso has more. The organization structure at the Agriculture Ministry has not been revised for over two decades. We have uh, a strategic view of how the Ministry will be reaching in the coming, in the coming year. For years. Uh, restructuring is necessary for us and it will enhance our business function, our work practice and improve our services. Ultimately to the farmers and the Fijian people who use and depend on us. The restructuring will also be vital for the Ministry of Agriculture. To decentralize our, our financial processes, make sure that decisions are done on time, procurement of goods and uh, the services that are, that are delivered to our customer. We will uh, decentra uh, also decentralize uh, our HR uh, recruitment process, make sure that our divisions are, are recruiting on time and getting the right people to the right place. Delivery in any organization, whether it's government, whether it's a household, any DMU, any decision-making unit, they would want to get maximum output the workshop has been hailed a success as staff have engaged and participated actively. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Ahead in sports, Nandunga retains Fair Brother Trophy. And Fiji finishes fourth at the Pacific Games. This and more coming up. And I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hama chale na sorry se Mirchi FM bo julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pakesh baat karte hai. Aur tawa me Mirchi FM sab kuch hai and Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Nandranga has avenged its two losses against Suva after defeating them 24-13 in the Fairbrother Trophy Challenge today. Nandranga showed a brilliant performance. Veteran Setefano Somoza says they were aware of the tough battle against Suva they were going to put. But he says the players were determined to retain the trophy. Suva is the undisputed champion of rugby in Fiji. They defeated us uh, twice this year and uh, we had to work hard. We knew coming into the, to, to today's game, we cannot relax. We have to work extra hard so we can uh, beat so because Suva is a champion team. Flying Fijians coach John McKee says he has been with the team for a cycle of four World Cups now and feels the players have developed a lot. McKee believes the match against the Maori All Blacks this evening will be a great motivation. For me personally, having been now involved for a full, full, full World Cup cycle, that, that you know that. You know, we've been able to really develop our game plan and develop our team. And I think, you know, with this group of players we've got, 
at this stage who are, who are vying for positions in the Rugby World Cup. We've got a great, great blend of um, experienced players, you know, players who have been to Rugby World Cups before, but also you know some younger players who are really challenging for places in the team. So, so that makes for a very interesting blend, I think. The Māori All Blacks will be hosting Fiji at the Rotorua International Stadium in New Zealand shortly. Lotoka team manager Jesse Ngane says the confidence led to their victory. Ngane was lost for words last night when asked about the team's success. Lotoka beat Yasawa 24-21 to claim the Bainimarama Shield. Yasawa was dominant in the first half of the match, however, the tables turned in the second half. Ngane has thanked everyone for their support towards the team. Uh, we were confident that we were going to win this game. It's just a matter of uh, picking up uh, uh, late on the, our, our momentum on the first half. But for, uh, as we go for the change room, we change a lot of things there. Yeah? I want to thank the coach, head coach and the management, executive of Lotto Rugby Union for being part of this victory. Team VG has finished fourth at the Pacific Games in our PSA. Samoa with 35 gold, 36 silver and 46 bronze medals. Fiji has maintained its fourth place finish just like they did in Papua New Guinea four years ago. But this time they have won two extra gold medals. New Caledonia is the new Pacific Games champion with 75 gold, 54 silver and 51 bronze. Papua New Guinea is second with 40 gold, 57 silver and 34 bronze while Ho Samoa is third with 38 gold, 41 silver and 44 bronze. Team Fiji women's 3x3 basketball side created Pacific Games history today. The team of Vilisi Tavui, Letava Wipi, Mili Koyame Navure and Michaela Mendes won the first gold medal in 3x3 basketball after beating Cook Islands 20-9 in the final. Captain Mendes says the win is for the whole basketball team. The feeling is amazing that's why you know towards the end of the game in five seconds I just started crying because you know, this is especially for a team, eh? and uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't, you know, I don't think we would have had the same fight. They've been here supporting from the day that we started. You know, they didn't have to come here, but they've been at every game. So just, um, you know, uh, give them all the, the love and glory today because they deserve it too. The Fiji men's football side had to rely on goalkeeper Benny Aminio Matenangara to save them in the bronze medal playoff against Papua New Guinea. Fiji defeated PNG 5-3 on shootouts after the game ended in a one-all draw. Aquila Dama with the details. It may just be a bronze medal, but it means a lot to the players, especially Benamino Matinangara and Simeone Tamanisau. So, uh, most of us, this will be our last SPG. Uh, for me and Simi, so we had to leave something behind and uh, put a record for the boys who is coming up next. So, so we just had to give our all. We were unlucky that we didn't make it to the goal and silver playoffs, so we had to take something back home. So we're happy that we're going home with the bronze. Coach Christoph Gamel says they had to really work hard after Roy Krishna equalized for Fiji in the second half and forced the game into extra time. The lips. Before uh, Fiji FA, because today, don't forget, the woman brings the bronze, the men brings the bronze. It wasn't happened since 2007, uh, or maybe... Uh, 2003, the last goal. So it shows how uh, much we work hard, no matter uh, what happens. Meanwhile, the women's team beat Cook Islands 3-1 in the bronze medal playoffs as well today. <laughs> Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Long-distance champion Avikash Lal started the final day of Pacific Games with a gold medal for Team Fiji. Lal won the marathon early this morning after a lot of sacrifices from his family, costing around $10,000. Aquila Dama once again. After months of sacrifice, Avikash Lal is finally wearing his gold medal and he thanks his family for being there right from the start, even if it means spending quite a lot of money just to achieve his dream. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my mom and dad for the lovely support throughout the year. Uh, we spent more than $10,000 from January till July for my preparation. And today I was just focusing on, on doing a personal best and running a hard race too. So I managed to win a gold medal and uh, doing a personal best time. That's a pretty good achievement for me and uh, my country as a whole, Fiji. Lal had a sleepless night leading up to the race this morning, but it's quite a special goal as it's his first in his second Pacific Games. Uh, exactly. Last night I realized that I, that gold medal is mine because I was so confident enough that I have done my training 
and everything is just well planned. Just like the Fiji 7 team, they won the Rio gold medal in uh, the Olympics. Same for me, I was more focused on that medal. And then I could not sleep last night because I ran the full marathon in my dreams. And then today, I won a gold medal. It's a lovely achievement for me. And this is my first ever gold medal for uh, to be won in the Pacific Games. For now, he'll enjoy the moment and celebrate his achievement with his family when he returns home tomorrow. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Well, we now join Aquila Dama live from Samoa. Aquila, what's the atmosphere like at the closing of the Games? Another 2016 uh, Pacific, another 26, another uh, successful Pacific Games has come to an end here in Apia, Samoa, and of course uh, now the uh, official athletes uh, and uh, also the um, um, whole of Samoa are now looking forward to the next Pacific Games in the Solomon Islands, in Honiara in Solomon Islands in 2027. But in as far as uh, Team Fiji's final day of um, um, competition is concerned, we won a total of five medals today: two gold, one silver, and uh, two bronze. Well. Spoke to um, uh, Mr. Vidya Lakan, the Pacific uh, Games um, uh, Council uh, president earlier today. He said they are happy with what Samoa, Samoa has offered for the 2019 uh, Games. And of course, uh, the athletes and the team officials are happy with um, what Samoa has offered for the uh, 2019 uh, Pacific Games. And at the moment, the um, closing ceremony is currently underway before the um, uh, lowering of the um, Pacific uh, Games flag, before it's be in, uh, being handed uh, over to uh, the delegates from the Solomon Islands. But um, in as far as Team Fiji's uh, campaign is concerned, we have 35 gold medals, two better, uh, two more than uh, the last uh, Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea uh, four years ago. But from us here in uh, Apia, Samoa, Fafetai and Tofa Sofua. Thank you, Aquila. The Fiji baseball under-12 team has qualified to the under-12 baseball World Cup that will be held in Taiwan. This after the regional baseball qualifiers were cancelled due to low turnout and it worked in favour of Fiji as they became the wildcard entrants. Faria Begum has more. The invitation by the Baseball and Softball Confederation to participate in the Under-12 World Cup was surprising, says President Takao Mochida. A World Baseball Softball uh, Confederation, which is the uh, main body of the Baseball Association in the world, uh, invited us to participate for the final round of the Baseball World Cup under 12 uh, as a wild card. So we are really lucky and fortunate to have uh, this kind of opportunity. Machida says they are ready to give a tough challenge to other competitors. He is sixth student of St. Marcelin Primary School. Samu Tamata is excited to play in Taiwan. I feel very exciting going without my family. Um, but uh, going with my teammates and playing for the World Cup. Fiji will take on South Africa in their first World Cup match next Friday. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Fiji Poles have finished at 14th place after losing to Samoa a second time in the Netball World Cup. Special schools around the Northern Division gathered in Lombasa today for their annual Inclusivity Sports Day. The rain this morning did not deter the students from turning up in numbers and participating in indoor activities. And the little ray of sunshine that came a while later was also put to good use with a good game of cricket. The event is held annually in Lombasa and Chief Guest Veremo Muria used the opportunity to call for continuous support for people with disabilities. As a government representative, our responsibility is to promote and embrace inclusion as a result of the commitment made, by, made through our constitution. I urge non-government organizations to follow suit. Showers and isolated thunderstorms were experienced over most parts of the country. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over the country. Therefore, associated cloud and showers is expected to affect the Fiji group until tomorrow. We take a look at the west. It was very humid. Occasional rain and drizzle was experienced. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, mainly cloudy and very humid with showers at intervals. All the way up in the north, it was pl partly cloudy, heavy thunderstorms and, a shower and showers in the areas late in the afternoon. At sea, moderate southeast to northerly winds, fresh at times, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide will be at 9.23 p.m. with high tide at 3.15 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is expected to be at 6.37 
Now we look at the outlook for tomorrow, rain and drizzle to continue in most areas. And as for Monday, cloudy periods with some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands is forecast. Recapping the main stories, a new narcotics bureau to tackle hard drugs. Human resource practitioners discuss employment issues and overloading remains a concern. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, onto our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, has John McKee found the best players and combinations for the World Cup? You can visit our FBC website to answer. Well, do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akireta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.